Tripura is a hilly state in the northeastern region of India. It comprises picturesque hills, valleys, and dense forests. Its present total population is 36 lakhs, 73,917. Among them, there are combinations of tribal and non-tribal people residing in the state. There are altogether 19 different tribes living in fraternity and peace. The tribes are Tripuri, Ryang, Jamathia, Chakma, Halam, Noatia, Mog, Lusai, Uchai, Utkoki, Garo, Munda, Orang, Santal, Kashia, Veel, Chimal, Bhutia, and Lapcha, including sub tribes like Bong, Korbong, Koloi, Murashing, Malsum, Kaiping, Chawai, Rangkol, Choroi, Simar, Tankchib, Shankchib, and others. The soil of Tripura, previously known as Tripura, has been a witness to the vast and rich culture of its tribal communities from the time immemorial. History repeats itself. This land has been home to a vast number of indigenous people who have all added to its culture and heritage. Many indigenous people and tribal groups have made their territory within this state even before the British Empire had turned it into a princely state. Many of these tribes were the ones who had migrated from Mongolia, Tibet, Burma and South China Hills and on their arrival sowed the seed of their vast culture into the demographic stages of the state. The Kukis are one of the numerous ancient races that history could account for. They are also known as the headhunter tribe in Tripura. There are various subgroups within this tribe, with Rukum being their main subgroup. Dalong and Lusai are also some other clans which belong to this tribe and their primary and permanent dwelling and living areas used to be deep forests. They are characterized by short height, flat face and nose and brown skin tone. Primarily, the cookies were thought to have no knowledge of growing food and were mainly depicted as food gatherers and hunters who used to live collecting fruits and berries from the forest of produce and also catch fishes and snails. They, being extremely skilled hunters, rely on hunting wild animals like boars and roosters and other birds and fowls. Cookies specialize in making hunting traps which were capable of taking down boars, tigers, bears and even elephants. This tribe was basically a warrior tribe, with its people being quite efficient in fighting skills. They never had any kind of barter system, and rather used to procure their food, poultry stuff, and other valuables by attacking other tribal villages.
They were deadly when it came to combat and attack, and their raids in other villages always ended up with them killing large number of people and burning their tongue houses to ground. Their raids and snatches were all governed and controlled by their elected herd, who was called their tribe's king or Sardar. Hunting used to be an important and the primary occupation of the cookies, and eventually the economic activities also revolved around this hunting occupation. Wild boars, monkeys, fowls, deer, hare, and dogs were among their delicacies. Besides bows and arrows being their primary hunting weapons, they also used salai sock and cham for hunting purposes. Their specialization in making various types of traps made them efficient hunters and also called them bigger games. Ethnically, cookies belong to the Mongolian race of tribes, but their language finds a stretch of cookie chain language. In Tripura, Traces of this tribe are found in Dolubari Ambasha, Hawaibari Teliamura, Dupdoli Gomati district, Rubukpa Taidu, and Longshirkau Shonamura. Their territory ranges from Tripura to parts of Manipur, Mizoram, and the Kacha district of Assam. The word Kuki finds a respected position in both of the chronicles of Meitei and Tripura kings. In the royal chronicles of Tripura, Shiva has been quoted as falling in love with the Kuki women in around 32 AD. Again, in the same chronicles, we find mention of Tripura prince marrying a Kuki princess in 1415 AD. The Kukis were the single largest tribes inhabiting the Tripura hills before the rise of the, the Barmas. Kukis lived in tong houses generally made of bamboo and chan grass and were habituated to live in the clustered villages with peaceful neighboring relations. Like every other family, in cookie families too, all the laborious jobs like hawking in the field, building tools and hearts were done by the men, while the women took care of their children, helped in gathering food and did other household chores. They were extremely social in their tribes and respected the elderly people immensely, seeking their permission and governance into every matter ranging from marriage to childbirth or death. Jum cultivation is the most important and widely used cultivation and farming process among all tribes. Cookies, being no exception, also perform June cultivation. The whole family takes care of the cultivation process personally, with the young and the elderly ones taking part actively. The women too come up to help their families with the cultivation processes. During the season of June cultivation, a couple usually goes out to find out for places for June cultivation. When they find a place which may be ideal for June cultivation, they perform a puja to worship their June god, also called 
Lao Bowl and decide whether the land is favorable for Juma or not. Then they mark the land and burn the trees in that to make the land rich and nutrients. Then seeds are sown and the crops are cultivated and harvested. Jum cultivation of Lao Inna is called by the cookies is famous for its nutrient-rich food produce, which is entirely organic with no use of pesticides or fertilizers. The cookies mainly grow vegetables and paddy. They also add wild leaves, plants and wild potatoes and mushrooms to their diet. Igniting fire by the cookies has been a remarkable one. We all know that a fire ignition got a girl in the primitive stage by striking stones. Here is the another epoch-making venture by the cookies. They used to fix up a bamboo piece on the ground. Two men sitting in the opposite directions gave vent to rubbing another piece of bamboo. Rubbing and rubbing. The bamboo piece reached the paramount level of heat to ignite fire. With the help of collected hay, blowing air to the hot bamboo piece, the preliminary fire was invented. Later, they added many more bamboo pieces. Thus, the required fire for cooking and other purposes was ready. Pollution-free environment, living so close to nature and having such organic and nutrient-rich dietary habits bless them with good health and longer life expectancy. The cookies and their attachment to music and dance is so much that all the occasions are incomplete without their dance. During June Puja, the Chai or the head priest along with a subordinate performs the puja which is commemorated by playing a handmade bamboo whistle called Thait three times. After the Jun puja is done, the ceremony is concluded by a musical dance performed by both the men and women of the tribe. Besides hunting and gathering the cookies display the traits of fine craftsmanship too. They have mastered the art of making baskets and other bamboo craft items, thus making themselves financially strong and economically stable. Women organize this dance with men, joining them and they make merry through their dance on the beats of handmade drums and to the melodious sound of rosam. Tribes throughout the world have latched themselves to the wonderful euphoria that music and dance provides. The cookies are no exception. Their lives revolve around nature and jum cultivation and hence their music. Folklore and dance also revolve around these activities. Besides Jum dance or Taido as they call it, Kokis have other dances like war dance, bamboo dance, Kauzain Tlo dance, which is done while worshipping Lord Shiva and Rakum Baitlo or the year and celebration dance. Cookies make their own musical instruments like drums or kung, kasa or darping, gongs or dakung, etc. And they also use animal hooves and horns as trumpets and blows to produce music. Buffalo horns are also called shaldeki. 
is greatly used by them as trumpet. During their June harvest, they keep their harvest on the raised platform, offering the first produce to their deity. They also sacrifice poultry animals and pigs and goats as a sacred offering to their deities. Their country liquor is a delicacy among them, also called langi. This country liquor is used by them in every occasion as an essential cocktail. They worship deities like Ganga, Tagiraro, Baniryo, and Burasa. They believe their existence is cared of by the deities, and hence their rituals and worship practices revolve around pleasing their deities for their good health and prosperous future. Cookies are fond of colorful dresses and ornaments. They make their own clothes using the cotton cultivated from their jhum. They use their handloom expertise in making and weaving their own clothes. The men wear a piece of cloth called tanlo as their top and wear kanjel, a big piece of handloom as their bottom. The women wear zapuibor or on their top and zao kanje as their bottom. The ornaments worn by cookie women are called mishi or ratoi, which are made of reddish glass-like metal. They also prefer flower and seed ornaments, with silver being the most preferred and metal for making earrings called dankanbe, necklaces or taibe. They also wear their hat gears in all occasions. Men wear misotel and women wear taoit, which is made using a seal rooster's feathers, also called antang. While taking part in some occasion, they wear their traditional clothes and jewelry, which make them distinct from the other tribes. The cookies are strictly endogamous. They do not marry outside their community. The cookie tribal people generally perform arranged marriages, where the groom is found by the bride's father and vice versa. They also have love marriages in their community, but that takes place with special permission and consent from the bridegroom's parents and village elderly. When marriage proposal is set up, the groom's father visits the bride's father and settles down to an agreement. The groom's father then pays some price to the bride's father as an agreement of the bride's hand. Before the actual marriage ceremony takes place, the girl and the boy can only be allowed to live together by their parents' permission. Marriages in Koki community usually take place in the months of December and January. Marriages are done under the consent of a child, while divorces are governed by the Koki Council. Marriage takes place under the guidance of their priest or a child, who chants some passage and mantras and performs the marriage ceremony in front of some of the family relatives of the boy and the girl.
goreng pak kami itu ini ngai indro untuk naik zoom in The marriage is followed by a grand feast, which is usually thrown by the bride's father, which is a feast of meat and their country liquor, lungi. The best thing about Kuki community is that they neither encourage nor practice child marriage. Child marriage is totally non-existent in their tribe. The birth of a newborn is marked as an auspicious occasion in the Kuki community. Generally, whenever a kid is born, a special ritual takes place. This ritual takes place on the third day from the birth, if it is a boy, or on the fifth day, if it is a girl. This ritual is performed by the mother of the child, who feeds her child from her mouth similar to that of how birds feed their children. This ritual is then usually followed by a big fist thrown by the child's parents. However, this mouth-to-mouth -mouth ritual is very rare. Cookies love their children very much like others. The exposition of such tender affection it's very much visible while the mother lulls her baby by singing lullabies. Though they cannot provide the modern cradle, here the purest love of the mother overflows with her own effort. A traditional cloud has been fixed up. The baby enjoys it. The mother sets her traditional tune. This practice has been going on from the time immemorial. The children in the cookie community grow up playing around the elderly of their villages and learning their socio-economic values from them. When girls come off the age of puberty, a ritual is performed by the Uchai, where the girl is given a breast cloth to wear. This ceremony is done by sacrificing a pig to their deity, which ensures the fertility and well-being of the girl. The cookies are highly superstitious and believe in the power of Ayurveda. They perform their animalistic rites on the basis of their superstitions. Cookies believe besides their deity protecting them, there also exist evil spirits and demonic power around them, which tend to harm them and their families. Hence, they offer animal sacrifices to settle the bloodlust of those evil spirits and keep themselves and their families safe. They believe in natural sounds and noises, like the thundering of clouds or gushing of winds as the bearer of good luck misfortune or epidemic. Cookies depend on Ayurveda and their knowledge of using herbs and plants to cater to any disease or prevailing ailments. They have their Achai, their village fortune teller, and also their Ayurveda and herbal medicine expert. Patain is the supreme god of cookies, who is responsible for both the good and bad of the community. The village priest who worships Patain is known as Thiampan or Jaland. In the month of April and May, during Baishag, the cookies worship their deity seeking his blessings for the well-being of mankind and their community. They sacrifice goats and buffaloes and arrange for a feast. Besides Patain, 
Turkish also worship other deities like Shiva, Rodon, Dairoli, Jum deity, etc. Cookies were primarily Hindus. The cookies are much organized and have their own social and village administration. Their village chief is called Sangal Tong, who is elected by the consent of the elderly people of the village. The chief works as the village supreme and the villagers as his followers. During any dispute, the chief's decision is final, and the villagers are to go by the orders of their chief. Every cookie village has an Uzir or the cookie Raja, who is the subordinate of the village chief. The cookie Raja uses the word Lal before his name to make his dignity and his position in the village. Generally, the use of the word Lal is hereditary and used by the family of the cookie Raja. The Lal has the power to meet of all sorts of disputes and also imposes fines on the offenders. They are also responsible to ensure the peacekeeping in their village. The dexterous cookie males prioritize the bamboo almost in all events of their life. Bamboo has been a symbol of power, love, sacrifice to God and goddesses. Both the males and females used to spend a good amount of time in games and sports, but also with the bamboos. Truly speaking, bamboo accelerates their gusto and livestock too. The cookies, being extremely superstitious, believe in the afterlife or the life after death. When a man or a woman in their community dies, their death is mourned by beating a drum and kasha. The drum and the kasha are also beaten so as to inform the people in the nearby areas about the demise of the person. Then all the villagers and the family members of the dead gather around the porch in the courtyard and pay the homage and condolences to the deceased. The dead body is then well dressed with fine clothes and jewelry and his or her favorite equipment and tools are kept beside him or her with their favorite food and drinks and of course langi. Food and drinks given to the dead signify the well-being of the soul as it makes its long journey to the afterlife and to the eternal world. If the village Lal or Raja dies, he is buried with the rest of the other warriors of the tribe with whom he used to hunt or fight wars. After the burial is done, a feast is thrown by the family of the dead, remembering him and offering their homage. <laughs>